Hello friends, my name is Theo, and today in this exciting Me Stream tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at creating this cool, swirly, arch-type effect inside Blender using animation nodes. Now, this was inspired by this guy, or gal. I'm pretty sure it's a guy, but I'm not sure. I'm not going to assume genders here. Maybe it, it's non-binary. But, Chroma FX on Instagram, I saw this, I said, that looks really cool. That seems pretty simple, but it's got some cool ideas behind it. And, you know, this person knows how to do art, so, you know, I just, just stole their ideas. I said, I can make that in... Houdini. So I made it in Houdini first, and then I decided, hey, this is pretty simple. I can make this in Blender using animation nodes. So that's what we're we'll doing today. So open up Blender, and the first thing we'll do is create a little art. So we're going to be following along. So create a circle, and we'll go and make this have something like 128 vertices on it. That should be good. It's important to make the vertices now because if you subdivide them, that will screw up the iteration things later. So make sure you just give yourself as many as you want now. So we got that. Now hit A to deselect stuff and then B to box select. And we will just select this quarter. And then we'll hit Control I to invert the selection and delete all these vertices. And we'll name this arc. And I'm going to leave that with the funny capital letters because I know that that's going to annoy some people. And that is funny to me. All right. Now we'll go ahead and make a new box that we're going to use to clone onto this. So there's our cube. We'll pop out of this guy and go into edit mode and scale it on the Z axis by one tenth. And now that's looking pretty good. And while we're here, we might as well just give it a little bit of a bevel. So control B and scroll wheel to give it a little bit more geometry excellent so that is looking pretty nice we're basically done now let's go into animation nodes and also i apologize if you can hear the thunder and and rain going on outside because it's very thundery and rainy all right so animation nodes new node tree we'll call this um twisty because that's funny so next thing we'll do is select our arc and we will hit R, X, 90 and pop that guy up. So now we're looking good. All right. So now inside of our node tree, we'll hit Shift A. And the first thing we'll do is create an object and we will get our box. which We will rename to something cuter like slab. And then we will duplicate this with Shift D and we will make one for our arc. Now we want to make a slab for each vertice on this arc. So we'll do that with an object instancer node. And we'll put our object in the object to instance. And to get all the points on the arc, we need a mesh object input. So mesh input. And we'll pipe our arc in here and bring our vertex locations out to our instances. And now you see we get this get length. So that tells us how many vertices we have. So it should be 128 divided by about four. If you want to check that, you can hit control A and type in viewer, just to make sure that things are going correctly. You can see you've got 33 vertices. Excellent. So now we have all these objects, but they're all just being stacked on top of each other and they aren't moving around. And we want these to be moved around, make them cool and swirly. So we need to do that by iterating over each object and then applying a transform to each of those objects based on something, which will create our swirly effect. So what we do is we make a loop. So we'll hit Shift A, go to Subprograms, Loop, and we'll call this Swoop, Scoop, because we're being culturally relevant. And we'll make a new iterator, and this will be a thing that drives stuff. So first vector list, and this will be points. And then another one, which will be objects, object list. And it's calling that objects is fine. Now, in order to get stuff out of here, we need to invoke this subprogram. So scoop, scoop, and objects go into objects. And vertex locations go into points list. Excellent. Now we can start doing some fun stuff. So the first thing that we'll do is add our object transforms output node, which will be what drives all of this transformation. And we will add position and scale 
and rotation. And now if we just pipe our points right into the location, you can see that already we get them cloned on top of that, which is you know pretty close to what we're wanting. So it's not great yet, but you know, I mean that's pretty cool on its own, I'm sure. So the first thing that we'll do is we'll have these scale down as they go up. So we need to do some math to get that happening. So we're going to use two different ways of iterating over these in this. And you can use, you know, either one. You just need to change around some multipliers. But it's good to know both these ways. So this first one, we're going to use the object index. So the higher the index, the smaller it's going to get. So we'll go to vector math. And we'll also add a vector combine. And so we'll type our vector combine into our scale. And you can see automatically everything drops down to zero. And if we scale these up one by one, we're getting, you know, different scales. Looking great. So we'll zero these out or we'll one them out. Just so we're back to where we started. And now in order to make these smaller as they go up, because indexes go up starting at one down here and they're going up to 33, I'm guessing. Maybe they start at zero, and that would cause some math problems, but I don't think they do. So in order to do that, we need to divide our index. We need to divide a number by our index. So this is actually not vector math. This is float math. But we'll do this normal math. There we go. So now take our index and divide. And we need to divide this by some number. So we'll type in something like 30 to start off with. And we will pipe this into our x, y, z, see where we're at. And bring this down, down, down. There we go. Now that's looking pretty good. So you see it makes our bottom one pretty big, but that's fine. We're getting, you know, getting stuff looking good. So now that's looking pretty good for now. We can refine this, but we've still got to do our rotation and that will probably affect our scale some. So let's show how we rotate these around. So we'll create a cool little arch. I mean, you could just leave it like this and that's probably fine, but we want to rotate because that's, that can do some interesting stuff as well. So we'll do a quick little vector separate and we're going to do this a different way. We could probably drive this by the index as well, but it's more fun to drive it by the Z position. And if I accidentally say Y position sometimes, I probably mean Z just because I'm used to Y up programs and this is a Z up. Program. But anyway, if you don't know what that means, don't worry. We're going to be affecting Z. All right, so vector in. Now we get our X, Y, and Z out. And now the way that I rotated these around in Houdini was using uh, quaterions, qu quaterions, quaterions, qu these, these four dimensional vectors as opposed to a three dimensional Euler. And that's, that's an interesting thing. So you basically define the axis that you're rotating, and then you rotate along that axis instead of just rotating on predefined axes, which is fun. So you can do this with just an Euler as well, but I'm going to do it with a quad, 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 you know, with one of those. So we'll go ahead and add one. So number, I'm going to just search from Q, U, A. So we want to... Combine. <laughs> I really want to call them quadermelons because that's pretty funny, but that's definitely not it. But anyway, so now we are going to pipe our Z into the W, Y, and Z, which will get us you know, pretty close to what we're wanting. And if we try and pipe this right into our rotation, you can see we get a quote whatever from Euler. And let's set our X to something like 1. And now you can see it works just like that. You see, if we rotate X around, we can refine this a little more. But 1 seems to work pretty well. Now we are most of the way there. You see, we can refine our scale from here. So that's, you know, getting, getting a little goofy. Maybe we want to do a different thing with our Z scale. Or even better, we want to make these all... Uh, go up at a different rate. So what if we took the square root of this? So we go into number math, make this 
square root and pipe this in there. There we go. I'm getting things lining up a little bit better. Now we can also go ahead and change our Z scale. So let's just move this little point over there. And we'll shift D to duplicate this math node and change it to something like multiply. Drop this into Z. And now we can adjust our width as much as we want. So maybe we'll have some overlap there. Maybe we won't. You can adjust this to taste. I think that's looking pretty good for what I'm going for here. And now the last thing that we need is we need to mirror this over top of each other. So how are we going to do this? This outputs a bunch of different objects. That's annoying. If this is Cinema 4D. We could just use like a combined object or we could, um, you know, join all these together and mirror it over. But an even easier way of doing that is going back to our original object and applying a mirror modifier to this and then going back and using copy full object, deep copy, turn these things on and off a bit. We might also need to add a little object to mirror this across. So let's create an empty and we'll call this mirror axis. And then we'll go back to our slab control and mirror object, mirror axis. And we'll click these on and off again. And there we go. Nice. Now we get it. Just had to refresh some. And now this is most of what we're making. So get this guy out of the way. We'll create a quick little floor. Now we'll just bring these two closer together. So we've got our location that we can change. So we'll do a vector separate and drop this in there. And it automatically drops down a combine one as well. And pipe X, Y, and Z together. And now we'll just make a nice little... We don't even need to do that. There's an easier way of doing this, Theo. Shift A, vector, math. Just do some straight up vector math right here. Get that guy and then this. I mean, what's going on here is pretty cool as well. You know, if you just don't want to deal with stuff. But there's that. And now we can move our X in until it matches up pretty well. So minus 0 0.015, minus 0 0.02. Minus 0 0.023. That's looking pretty good. So now there, I mean, that's the gist of the thing. If you want to leave now, you can. Otherwise, we'll spend a little bit of time and make this look pretty. So I'll make a quick camera. Camera, Alt-G, Alt-R, R, X90, G, Z, G, Y, 0, G, Y, whoop, G, Y, Move this around, R, X, there we go, G, Z. That's framed up pretty nicely. Maybe we will change this around to like a 24 millimeter lens just so it's a little more epic. And G, Y, G, Y, G, Z, G, Z, R, X. There we go. So that's looking pretty good. Maybe it brings in a little bit more. It's a little more imposing. That's looking cool. We'll add a quick material here. Whoop. So we'll click on our slab and we will make this just a metallic shader. So principled shader, metallic with some roughness. We'll add a point light. Let's split this view so that we can see what we're doing. And shift D, duplicate it over. We'll make this one cool. And we'll make this one warm. We'll see how things are looking here. We'll quick select the border. 
There we go, and that's looking pretty neat already. Um, let me make the environment black. There we go, that's looking pretty cool. Um, we'll add an object of interest here. So shift Z, I will create a quick little triangle. So bring our vertices down to three in this GZ. R, X, 90, minus 90, S, F to make a face. And that's looking pretty good. Make it a little smaller, bring it up a little bit more. Then we'll extrude it in the Y axis some, back a little bit. And then we will bevel it, control B. And that's looking pretty good. We'll add an emission shader to this. So make this one new emission, make this something like, well, we'll go into the thing. And if you have the node wrangler plugin, you say control T on here. And then we'll replace this image texture with a noise texture. And then we will put a quick little ramp in here and we'll make it like pinky red pink enta there and cyan there see how that's looking we will not use uvs we will use generated and that's looking good we'll just crank this up to something like 50 25, we'll make this a little bit more extreme, more of that and more of that. There we go, that's looking cool. Now we'll add some atmosphere with a cube and we will add a diffuse texture to this and a volume scatter Make the density 0.1, the anisotropy 0.9. And I feel like we're missing some light up here, so we might duplicate another one of these lights, Shift D. And that's a little bit strong, so we'll bring this down. Make larger, bring the emission down. Get some fill and we'll make this who knows. Yeah, maybe just like that is fine. And yeah, there you go. Now you've got a cool looking thing. Oh, let me make sure these textures update. So we'll go back to our animation nodes and we'll just turn all these off again. And now see. There we go, now I've got our metallic texture showing up. That's looking cool, we can make this this light be more of like a reflection thing, so size up more. And then we will add some blur to our material over here to our slab, and we'll add some roughness there we go, now get that nice little shine in there. And that might be a little bit too much. So I might move this in there. It's not it's still a little bit moody. Maybe I'll move the featured object forward a little bit and that'll help illuminate the front some. And there we go, that's looking cool. Now we'll go to our camera and we will set our distance onto our featured object. And I'll set the radius size to something like 0.1 maybe. It might be a little bit much, so like 0 0.05. And I'll set the ratio to 2 so people think we're shooting anamorphic. And there you go. Now you've got your little scene. So you can animate this if you want. That would be cool. You can animate the curve to like you know, swing together. You can animate the rotation in animation nodes. All sorts of good things you can do here. But that brings us to the end of our little tutorial. Good little animation nodes tutorial. 
as a fun practice for me to try and do something that was in Houdini in Blender. But anyway, if you like this video, give it a like. If you didn't, give it a dislike. No matter what, leave feelings down in the comments below. Also, share this video with your friends because you know how the YouTube algorithm is now where, you know, people just aren't being recommended stuff as much. So it's up to you if you, you want to see more tutorials to, to spread the word. It's, it's not YouTube doing it anymore. Also, be sure to ring the bell even though that apparently doesn't do anything. So for the 80% of you who aren't subscribed, thanks for, for swinging by. Check out mecmedia.com slash products. We've got all sorts of good stuff that you can check out. They'll make your stuff easier, better, etc. So once again, I'm Anthea with Meesner Media. Hope you have a great day, and I will see you next time. Bye.